everybody. I'm doing a 16 minute session for a client. This is a follow up to several other sessions. So I'll put links in the description. I'm going to read the goals here and then get tuned in. Okay. Goals are I have addictive proclivities towards sugar, alcohol, and nicotine, along with the codependency highlighted by spirit in our last session. There's so much shame and moral weakness projected onto these types of addictions, and it feels like an auric scarlet letter forever in the way of true healing and love. These addictions resulted from early attachment, trauma, and PTSD. I hope this session brings healing to others struggling with similar soul bruises and addictions. This is going to be awesome. <laughs> Alright, I'm just going to relax and absorb in all of this meaning here. Okay. All right, I'm gonna relax and get tuned in. So what can we do to help free you from these addictive proclivities? Sugar, alcohol, nicotine. There's definitely a tight welling up in the throat, really thick, congested energy. And it gets very congested here and then pulls and tugs onto the third eye here. What's interesting is, I feel like there's a lot more to be said that is sort of hiding in the dark right now. Because when I'm in your energy field, it feels too easy, too simple. I feel like there's more going on, but it's hidden behind the scenes. So all I can go with is what I've got, what I'm experiencing right now. And then there's this sort of like dark bluish black kind of um, just energy that's surrounding the scene right now. So I'm looking into this, into the hidden spaces, okay? I feel like there's a lot more noise, a lot more energy, but it's all muted. So I'm just going to have to just one step at a time, okay? So I'm, I'm choosing to see you as separate from myself. And I'm looking at you with this uh, jam in the throat, tugging on the third eye. And there's a lot more sort of congested in the mouth and into the throat. Uh, you look like a woman from maybe 200 years ago. She's wearing a beautiful blue silk style dress. It's like a Victorian energy to it. She has a pretty um, hat that's sort of... Uh, it's got... It's, it's in her hair, so it's got a clip that's holding it into her hair. Her hair is pulled up and it's blonde. She's maybe in her 40s. She looks disheveled, so her hair is not really tight and together. There's parts that are sort of pulled out. Her dress looks dirty and it looks a bit crooked. And she's emanating that she doesn't want to talk about it. There's also kind of, it looks like grapes. It looks like kind of mashed grapes. Not all of them are mashed, but they're black. And there's a black jelly kind of effect to it in the stomach.
and the more I stand here, it's just loosening things up. So there's a bit of a, there's some stress that's starting to kind of squish out and it's pretty pissed off. <sighs> relaxing this on down there's still a lot there in the stomach it's kind of looks like black olives as well like a black jelly with black olives she still doesn't want to talk about it I'm just uh, continuing to sort of lighten up the energy here so it sort of fluffs out I do see that dark and blue, it's like black and blue energy is it slowly um, pushing back a little bit. So we have more room for each other. More room. It feels like we're pulling some of this that's hidden forward. We can take this as slow as we need to go. You're thinking of ways to almost like manipulate me in a way because you don't want to talk about it. So you're coming up with other ideas to talk about something else or you ever have one of those awkward moments on the phone where you don't really know what else to say and they're kind of not sure what to say so you're trying to think of what to say but you don't feel like you need to say goodbye yet and so there's just weird like silence <laughs> it's kind of like that right now <laughs> but I, I can hear her thoughts like it's like this silent secretive little hamster wheel of what do I say to get her to look somewhere else or do something else but nothing comes out nothing is said <laughs> I will say just getting that initial out, energy out, is relaxing things more in the solar plexus. Your energy is actually pushing down because it was really stuck up in the higher chakra. So it's starting to push down, which is good. I'm just going to keep standing here and looking at you. And I tell you that you look beautiful today. Even your hair is all over, your dress is crooked and dirty. And, but I'm going to tell you the truth. Because it's not the dress that matters, it's not the hair, it doesn't the hat, all that doesn't matter. Because the truth is you look beautiful today. She doesn't want to stand here and go through this with me. She does express that. She doesn't want to go there. She doesn't want to talk about it. Just let her be a mess. Just let her be like this. She doesn't want to do the work in order to fix herself, her dress, her hair, okay? And I say that's all you have to say is just simply be honest with what you're ready for. You're acknowledging there's more here. You're just simply not ready to go there yet. That's all you have to say. I'm not going to force you. But I will encourage you to take a peek when you need to take a peek and help you to feel supported as you go through this journey to heal yourself and what you've been through. 
there's odd snarly like energy it keeps flickering through her eyes like a really grotesque kind of golem like face but it's burnt skin it's a brownish and um like cream color there's the eyes are like the eyelids are burnt away so the eyes are really big and kind of bulged out a bit it's a bit small and it's very kind of in the back of the head and kind of like perched on your backside and it just peeks out every now and then I see it flickering through your face I ask her if she knows about that creature there's more creatures and there's more creatures that look like this one but there's something else, some other creature that has chicken legs. And that's down towards your feet. They're kind of hiding in this very large dress. I mean, the dress has um, got a lot of room at the bottom, okay? It's like a, it's got this princess element to it because it, it goes out, okay? <clears throat> it's not form-fitting. So there's plenty of little goblin-y things that can hide in the dress. <laughs> There's like eight or nine of them. Do they all have different looking feet from the others? There's another one that has the greenish. It reminds me of like alligator, crocodile. The feet and the legs. The rest of the bodies all look the same. It's just like they have different legs, feet. And we're talking two feet tall. They're all short. You... I, they echo also images of pigs. So when I look at them, I see through them and I see a pig pen and pigs, pig noises, pigs in the mud, pigs eating. <clears throat> and they're your pets. They're like, in a way, your pets that you're taking care of. You don't want to go there, you say, about your relationship with them. <laughs> You say that. I say, I want you to talk to me from your heart. Are you proud of your relationship with them? Do you feel that this relationship is helping you to thrive in this life? Or do you feel like you owe something to them? And once you've owed it, then paid the debt, so to speak, now you can move on to new relationships. Do you owe them something? You again have shame in your eyes and I don't want to talk about it. I'm, I'm not going to talk about it. I say, okay, so you owe them something. All right, yeah. Just relaxing it on down here. I'm really there's some big monster inside you here <laughs> big monster this is not this is only we're just baby stepping through something much bigger we're getting there just wafting out that because there's a lot of stress here I mean a lot of pent-up old emotional stuff okay <sighs> she hates me for telling her the truth Because she's forever their slave. But she won't look at it that way. She won't acknowledge it in that way. To her, she is doing something for them. And what she's doing for them is then... It's like paying a debt. I, that's kind of what it feels like. Um, but if she were to see that the debt would never be paid. And that she created this relationship that isn't actually real. 
that's going to be hard for her to cope with. <sighs> because she's going to feel dumb and stupid and she doesn't want to admit that she was wrong kind of thing. But all that stuff is the ego because nobody here is judging. <laughs> Nobody's judging. She's, uh, her, she's, uh, oof. there's a big monster beneath the surface here. It's like her skin is literally peeling away, like you peel an orange. It's like, it's peeling off and beneath the surface is her weird, burnt looking, odd, bloody face. It's got some similarities to these golem faces. It looks like there's bubbled aspects to what's underneath the skin. There's something demonic about the, the persona. I tell her nobody's judging. You need to be exposed. And you holding back is just prolonging the healing process. When in the end, what is it that you really want? You want to find relief, right? <sighs> Alright. There's a really dark thing in here. That one's coming out the third eye here, too. <sighs> and she's... <sighs> These uh, clothes are starting to kind of... It's like she's just a form, and it's like a... It's a carcass, in a way. A human carcass, and it's got rotted flesh, ripped off skin burnt muscle tissues. It looks d demonic looking. <sighs> There's a lot more still, okay? We're just going to continue to work through this. This is a reflection of your pain. This is a reflection of what your vulnerability has cre created this inside yourself. So to heal her, it's going to change your whole life. Your whole relationship with this it's self-destructive behaviors, you know, sugar, nicotine, alcohol. It's I want to die behaviors like I, that's literally what it is. It's self-destructive deep beneath the surface. That's what is being said. Now we have to understand why, what created that, what created that longing to just want to be set free from all of this, right? I know you're talking about post-traumatic stress and stuff like that which you're on the right track with this. There's definitely stuff that is unresolved beneath the surface and it's really tight. It's really jammed. It's really... So we're just continuing to work through it and know that it is safe to have feelings. To safe to make the wrong decisions, you know? It's safe. It's safe to screw up. It's safe to have these weird goblin and golem-like pig friends. It's okay to. It's okay to even say that I owe them a debt, even if you don't, in order to somehow create this idea that you needed to create when really you're just a slave to the idea. And now you're a slave to these creatures who are just taking and taking and taking and taking from you. And you can just let it all go, right? Part of letting it all go is loosening the stuff up because it is tight. It is very tight. I mean, this is like entering into this for the first time. This is like a first time entry into this part of yourself. <sighs> okay, just a moment. I tell her that she looks beautiful today. And she's all gross looking and stuff. 
Because it's not that. That's just what her pain looks like. The truth is, she does look very beautiful. Because everybody is truly extraordinary, flawless, gorgeous, and fathomably beautiful. Everybody is. And so she is too. She also is. So I'm speaking to her about her truth. So she doesn't have to hold on to the pain anymore. She can just let herself be her beauty. Her true inner light, you know? She's, I'm going to have to let her, she's like, she's going to kill me. She's going to rip my head off. She's going to rip me apart. She's going to, it's just her pain speaking. That's because she feels ripped apart. She feels all this stuff. So she's just she's trying to just put it upon me instead of having to endure it herself. It's too much. It's so sad. Like So many human beings have aspects of themselves that are like this. And these aspects need lots of love and support. Lots of love and support. She says, I'll never be beautiful again. I'll never look like I once did. Her saying that is uh, loosening some things up. Um, third eye in the back of the head. It's a yellowish color. She's saying, let go of me, let go of me. She's saying that like she's speaking to somebody. watching her. It's like she's struggling with an invisible person. <sighs> this is getting instantaneously exhausting and the scene is shifting and it looks like a farm. And there's a barn with hay. And there's horses in the barn but they're kind of in the stables. So there's just, it's like hay, it's a big barn. She's on the ground on her knees. There's some sort of struggle going on here. And then she instantly goes back and says, I don't want to talk about it. Back to the blue dress and the hair and everything. She'd rather just look like this. She'd rather just look like this. Just accept me like this. I don't want to go there. 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 She says this. I say you've already gone there though. You're already there. You're there right now. Showing me what this is about. You're there. And I'm showing her, like, all her clothes ripped off. She's just like, stop it, stop it. This is very brutal. This isn't just, this is a brutal event. It's taking, 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 taking from her everything that she is, even her own life. It's really, there's, there's, it, it won't come all the way through, but it's, I can tell there's a morbidness about it and the feeling of taking. So raping, taking your virginity, taking your life, taking you away, killing you. Like, uh, it just kind of, escalates and then escalates and escalates and then now it's taken everything from you even your own life I just keep seeing now the scene shifts it kind of flickers an image of a man with a, a chainsaw cutting you into pieces feeding you to the pigs kind of thing it just I'm supposed to see it in this way I'm supposed to say it like that and I see him take all your body parts and throw it to the pigs. He's, he doesn't feel anything about that. That was great. That was really great for him. 
that was a satisfying to him to have that experience with you. It was pretty quick. I mean, it feels like it just happened and then was done. Man, this is really heavy on the mind and the spine, the upper spine. It's very exhausting. I don't want to live. I don't want to live anymore. 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 You can't face that man ever again. And I say, yes, you can. Because the man needs to face you again. And with a different pair of eyes that he's looking into. And you need to stand your ground, your power, because you're not powerless. The heaviness of this energy is like weighing down on my shoulders as it's also coming out of the back of the head and the upper um, back, the spine, the upper spine. And it's coming up, upward out of the head too. And there's some tension in the third eye. Very, very exhausting feeling. Now I'm starting to understand the pigs and what you owe them, and you don't owe them anything. You don't owe them your body, you don't owe them your life, but you can't stand up against this man. You don't want to look him in the eyes. You want to forget about it. Just forget about it like it never happened. It's easier for your soul to forget about it. But it isn't because souls don't forget. Souls never forget. Your soul remembers. I'm about to give you back a huge part of your soul energy that you've not been with for a very long time is this seeing a reflection of a pain that was so unbearable in this life a past life your soul knows about this and why it is looking like this and expressed like this and I'm feeling a major part of your soul that you just, you didn't want to remember. So you just literally took that part of your soul and then trapped it and kept it far away. So that you could continue with lifetimes without that reconciliation. But now something in this life is tripping over a divine time that this stuff has to be looked at. That soul needs to come back. There's something about power you need the power to come back to you. You've been, believe it or not, there's a powerlessness that that you express in comparison to you plus the soul coming back and the strength to look at this stuff and the strength to say, yes, I'm ready now. Oh my gosh. You're, you're like 10,000 times the strength you've ever known yourself to have. That's the difference here. That's how big of a deal this is. That's how very big of a deal this is. You're starting to feel very disgusted by these creatures. And you're kind of like they're flies in a way, but they're like two foot tall things. And you're like batting them off your body, but they keep crawling back and holding on very tightly to you, like clinging to you like little children. 
And you're just trying to get them off, trying to get them off, but they keep coming back. I say you don't have to fight with them. You need to own your own desires and what it is that you want. You don't even have to bat them off. You don't even have to touch them. You say, I'm done with these beings. And then snap your fingers and they're gone. Because that's how powerful you are to choose the reality that you want to exist in. And you're not a slave to anybody and you don't owe anybody anything. And you don't need to exist as something that needs to be taken. I'm going to take from you and then take from you and take from you and take from you and take from you. And that seems acceptable. As though you owe something. And there's nothing that you owe. Zero. You owe zero. Say it's not that easy. I want them to go away, but I can't just get them to go away. It's not that easy. I say I want you to tell me about the experience in the barn. I want you to tell me about the eyes of the man. When we go into the scene, all your bones are broken. All of them, your like upper legs, lower legs, your feet bones, your um, arm bones, they're you're all like broken bones. It's awful. You say, I want you to look into his eyes with your broken bones body. You're completely naked. I say, I want you to tell me what you see. Does he own you? This is hard. I say, you can just look at his eyes. That's all. Just look at his eyes. You start there. Ah, that's better. You're getting pissed. You're getting angry. You're getting vicious. You're getting dark. <laughs> but you're actually absorbing. So you took on like an extreme victim role. And the terror was done to you. But now we're revisiting um, this event. And you're looking into his eyes where he took and took and took from you. Now the energy's coming back and you're being forced to be reckoned with now. So things are shifting. You're this this is good. This is good. Because it's getting out the true feelings, okay? And the true feelings are really dark and extreme and stuff. But this is anger. This is bottled up repressed anger <laughs> right i you know i mean you're full force the dark clouds the creepy breeze um twisted visions of the disturbing things you're going to do to this man um there's like thousands of grass blades that are going a million miles per hour through his body over and over and over again you're ripping his eyeballs out ripping his tongue out ripping his body parts off over and over and over and over and over again this is getting out extremely repressed anger okay now it disappears you're back as the broken bones girl just looking at his eyes and i say what do you see now
You're finding the strength to... It's like everything is in a timeout and you're just looking at his eyes without resistance. There's no anger coming out right now. You're just actually kind of neutralized to the point where you can just look at his eyes without judgment or extreme reaction. This is unexpected. But the scene goes through a, a shift to this man now is your lover. And you're both having like a, a teenage moment <laughs> in the barn, okay? There's nothing disturbing here. <laughs> There's nothing twisted, okay? It's very like a natural sexual event between two what is like teenage lovebirds. And there's no nothing dark, nothing twisted. It's very natural, very balanced, very equal, very tuned into each other. And you tell me that you love him. In this scene, there's no recollection of a ter an event of terror. There's only what it understands as a lover. And that you want to marry him one day. And you want to have children with him. Okay, snap my fingers and you go back. The broken bones girl looking at this man in his eyes. I want to see what you see next. You say, I want to see that our time together is, it's like, I want, it's, it's like when it comes to energy cords and any G attachments, I mean, I can feel this like soul connection that you just want to dissolve it. You need separation. Because it's just too much. It's like extreme love or extreme terror. That's what you see in his eyes is it's either extreme love or extreme terror. That's what you see. And you want to exist in balance. So being at one extreme, extreme love is not balanced. And extreme terror isn't balanced, obviously. Being in the center of the balance of it all. Your sacral chakra's got a circulation now and there's something shifting there. I still feel that we're not done yet with this farm scene, but you are standing on your own two feet and none of your bones are broken and you're actually taller than this man now. You have a hard time understanding how to just be yourself after everything. So you're, you're really awkwardly formed. Like your legs are really like you're standing on stilts, but they're almost like they're made out of metal poles. You have like one overly long arm and one like super short. You're really awkward. You look really awkward. You're like super tall and you're very awkward looking. You just don't know how to be yourself. You say, I want to take my life back. I say, that's good. I'm just going to have you just stand it as you are, awkward and everything. 
and just look at the barn, look at the horses, look at the hay, look at the man, look at the pigs. Look at the memories, the different memories. Look at what it is that you want out of life, balance. Look at the hardship, feeling like you don't know how to be yourself, the awkwardness. All of this is valuable and it's beautiful. It's creative energies working together to have experiences. But to find a balance between these experiences is the goal. We're just slowing down time because there's no rush here. You don't have to suddenly figure it out. You can just be like this for a little while. Say, I don't know if I'll ever be myself ever again after what I've been through. I say, but what if this form is you being yourself? What if this is more you than you've ever known yourself to be? This awkward person is more you than you've ever known yourself to be. To embrace it and to let it guide you, let it reveal more to you. We all want perfection. We all want the dream life, the dream experiences. But sometimes just being awkward is more of a dream than having dream experiences every day where you get bored and nothing difficult ever happens. Nothing challenges me. Then you have a challenging life and now you're awkward about it and you just want to have a dream life. Like, we got to just be happy with the events as they are and mold us and shape us into these awkward forms. We don't even know how to be ourselves, but yet this could just simply be you. Yeah, your legs look really strange. You've got, it's like those golems had different legs and feet. You have like deer legs. Your legs look like the legs of a deer. And you're standing upright. You're still very tall. I mean, you'd think goat, but these are d definitely deer legs. <laughs> they look skinny and fragile, but it's delicate. I'm going to go back to this uh, disheveled hair, bl blonde haired, blue dressed woman. I'm just going to go back and see where she's at now. She's saying, I I'm starting to feel at peace. <sighs> and feeling at peace isn't forcing anything to happen or not happen. Just be at peace with the way things are. And I see all the golems just fall off you like apples that fell off a tree. And they've served their purpose. So you're just surrounded by these like old rotten apples um, at, the f f at your feet. You don't want to put your dress on right or fix your hair, you say. I say you don't have to. She says, why don't I have to? <sighs> Keep seeing something about a gun and a gun in her hand. And she's starting to look like a saloon type girl. And she just wants to shoot me or shoot herself in the head. I ask her where her pain is. Is it in her heart? Is it in her stomach? Is it in her mind? 
Is it in her sexual body? She shows me herself blowing her head off again, again, again. It just, the scene goes back, it shoots herself again. Scene goes back, shoots herself again. Scene goes back over and 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 over again. I say, is that what you really want? Or is that a reflection of your pain? It has to do with control. When is she going to have control over her life? And I say, you have control over the gun right now. You can have the control to put the gun down. That's your choice, though. So if you take your life, is that really having control? Or is that being out of control? She's crying. She hates me. She throws the gun on the ground. And life will never make sense. I tell her this is this is okay. This is the healing process. It's going to have bad days. Just cry. Are you judging yourself? And your own tears? Why can't you just be a mess? Like a pile of laundry on the floor. Why do you have to kill yourself? You could just be a mess. And just cry. Until the mess is gone on the inside of yourself. Now you can do the laundry. And put it in, put it away. Which is... Helping the world to see a new side of you. As well as you seeing a new side of yourself. She feels like she'll never get out of this. Never. This weird cycle. It's like she's always in it. And stuck in this weird cycle. And I say that's because you're choosing to say that. You're choosing to feel that way. What if you aren't in that cycle right now? I want to ask you a question. Are you in that cycle or are you not in that cycle right now? This is how you have control over your life. Are you in a cycle of misery and suffering? The pain never heals or goes away? Are you in a cycle of, of self-love, determination, choice, and living by those choices and not backing down? Actually loving yourself enough to follow through with your own ideas and inspirations. Very dense energy. She says that she's trying. I say, which cycle are you in? Are you in the cycle of the extreme suffering? Or are you beyond that cycle now? I need you to tell me. She just wants it to be easier. She just wants it to be easy. Why can't it just be easy? Why can't this nightmare go away? She just keeps thinking about the gun. If she, if she goes away, then the nightmare goes away. If she goes away, then the nightmare goes away. I just want to go away. and The nightmare will go away. I just ask her about control. Is that control? All right, so <laughs> she's still got a lot. Of, you see what's all pent up in here? <laughs> okay, so she's got another. Um, I'm making a space full of. 
porcelain vases <laughs> on, on like stands, okay? And I'm giving her a baseball bat and I'm just letting her just, just break everything, okay? Because she needs some time to really get it all out of her system. So it's an infinity forever vases. Go have some fun. <laughs> How interesting, it's not vases, it's uh, statues with faces, male and female. There's so many sta different statues with different faces. <sighs> and you're just hitting all of them right in the head and breaking them all. I mean, you're just going through each one and, and hitting them with this like ultra bat. It doesn't break, but it breaks anything you hit. And it's very satisfying. You're still breaking things. <sighs> you see how broken you are on the inside. That's what this is about. Sometimes you gotta get this energy out. Just get it out somehow, some way. Until it neutralizes. And you don't feel like breaking things anymore. Boy, this is very, I mean, this is a huge relief on the third eye, the throat, the heart, the solar plexus, primary, primarily the upper spine. <sighs> All right, there's the next thing. It's about her receiving something. She still lingers in this uh, chaos, self-destructive nature. <sighs> but I'm going to open her heart to her higher self, okay? To see if she can allow that type of love in to help her, to assist her. Because sometimes when it hurts that bad, it's very hard to let the love in. The love and the light in. Very hard. So I'm going to just give her a chance we'll see if we can get the higher self into her heart very exhausting very very exhausting oh man they say you're an amazing person you're a beautiful person. It's okay to put the bat down. It's okay to let it all go. It's okay to give something new a try. Let's open your heart and give you some time with your higher self. You've cleared out a lot of pent up chaos. Let's see how you do with, with love and light. Boy, very exhausting. Yeah, you fall to your knees and you're kind of skinned again, but you have just a pure white skeleton. And you can't remove any more of yourself. You're down straight to the bone. There's a dark something coming out the throat here. It's like a gross black plum. And there's something coming out the third eye. It's also like a black shadowy goo that's coming out. Okay. Just continue to stay with it. Letting the higher self in. Don't need your mind to let the higher self in. The intention is enough. <sighs> oh. 
helping you to relax, helping you to receive love this time. You giving is not you receiving love. You receiving love is you receiving love. We're going to shift everything here. Shift your energetic programming. You're starting to be okay with loving yourself. I start to see the light is growing you back. Very hard on the third eye. Just a lot of density in the third eye, back of the head. starting to just become whole again, whole, a whole person, a whole soul. You've been wearing a very beautiful dress. It's got some metallic and shimmer. There's blue colors in it. Your hair looks very pretty. It's like got a braid and it braids around like a crown in a way, but it's like a headband or something in the back. It's really pretty. I'm starting to see everything that we've seen up until now is just fading away as though it never existed because you're transformed. So what was is no longer necessary because it has nothing to do with you as you are right now. Nothing. The, the golems, the farm, the guy, the pigs, the breaking of things, the, the gun, all that stuff disappeared. Okay? You're free. You're free now. It's again circulating the love back into yourself. Circulating the love back into yourself. This is good. This is very good. <laughs> you're, you're like waking up from some weird long dream. I mean, you're even kind of laughing. Like, whoa, what was that? <laughs> Seriously. That's how good it feels right now. <laughs> like, it was just some weird dream I had. <laughs> I don't even have to talk to you about what you're choosing. What cycle are you in? <laughs> you're totally in a new vibe here. Totally new vibe. It's great. It's so great. <laughs> You're, you're funny. I mean, you're, you're just laughing. I'm laughing with you. It's like, what was I doing? It's, I know. <laughs> it needed to happen like that. It needed to be extreme. It needed to be very, very extreme. But now it can be balanced. Now it can be self-loving. You don't owe anything anymore to anybody. Any idea of debts disappeared. You can receive now from others. And you can love yourself now. And the attachment to the, all the pain is gone. All the pain is being transmuted just as far away from you as you could imagine. I'm just going to have you sit just another minute or two with your higher self just glowing bright from within you so you really feel that energy you feel whole 
where I was telling you about a part of your soul coming back, I'm telling you, you're going to feel like a wholeness, like an inner strength, a knowing that you haven't been able to access yet. You're going to be able to access it now. And it's like you always had it. It's as if you would always had it. It's only now that you're becoming aware of it, of what it is to be whole and all that you are. It's really good. You say, I love you. I love you. I love you. You say that. You say it to your higher self, you say it, you like literally say to everybody in the whole universe, to me, to everybody watching, to all the animals and the plants and all the people that know and do not know you, all the souls, like you, you just say, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, like everybody is receiving the I love yous. This isn't giving yourself away, this is just being true to how you feel inside. You feel so full of your yourself in the best way. Like, you feel full of your identity, full of your soul energy, of your inner strength, of your beauty. You feel full of that. Mm. All right, that's all. That was super, super cool. It really intense, right? Wiggled our way through it. Found ourselves in this abundant, beautiful energy. <sighs> Feeling super free. <laughs> it's great. All right. Thank you very much for this beautiful experience and for sharing with others. If any of you are interested in exploring a psychic session with me, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Have a beautiful day, everybody.